As you may know, this is uh, it's new technology um, in our market. Um, and so we would like to demonstrate uh, uh, this technology, the vehicles that we have at the CSIR uh, are available uh, within the CSR fleet. And uh, CSR employees um, are allowed to get these vehicles and drive them, uh, you know, whenever they, they conduct uh, the CSR business. No, 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 not at all. We, we, we are not doing anything um, in terms of technology development or innovation. These vehicles are available commercially on the market. Um, currently, the CSR has a fleet of um, 10 electric vehicles. Uh, we've got uh, six Nissan Leafs and four BMW um, i3s. So these vehicles are, are not manufactured uh, in South Africa. They are imported vehicles and they are available on the market. So anybody who wants to buy electric vehicles can contact Nissan or BMW. So we have no intention of, uh, you know, going into any business uh, whatsoever, except uh, that we want to demonstrate this, this technology, it's new, and we want people to experience, uh, you know, driving these vehicles, uh, you know, maybe it's something that they might want to buy for themselves. Well, first and foremost, um, these vehicles are integrated into the CSR fleet and are available to the CSR employees to drive on official duties. So we would like uh, the employees to tell us uh, their experience, uh, you know, uh, what are the challenges they find, uh, you know, driving these vehicles. Uh, that is very important because uh, eventually it's, it's, it's people that are going to be using this technology. The other thing is we want to demonstrate the integration of electric vehicles in the um, internal grid or the CSIR to stabilize the grid when the portion of uh, variable renewable uh, energy increases. As I said at the very beginning, um, I work in a program called Energy Autonomous Campus Program. And that program has been designed to ensure that the CSIR starts um, installing uh, renewable energy uh, technologies on campus that would help us meet our electricity demand and so understanding that renewable energy uh, uh, technologies are variable it means we might have times when we have excess and times when we might have uh, less than uh, uh, you know what we need and so we are going to integrate the electric vehicles so that, um, for example, when they are not uh, being driven, we can use the batteries, uh, you know, that are in these vehicles, uh, you know, collectively as, a, as energy storage. Uh, and, you know, this can feed back to the grid uh, to prevent power outage during peak demand. And whenever we have excess, we can, you know, also use them uh, so that they could be charged and then try and stabilize the grid. So we, 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 we're looking at the potential of use of electric vehicles in energy storage and performing any other uh, you know grid services that might be required in the future okay now the your employees have been driving these cars what have been some of the hindrances that they've said that they've experienced um look it's it's still really early days um so these vehicles um have been around for about uh, a year and a half to two years and so we're still, you know, uh, collecting data. Uh, you know, like I said, we've got two uh, different uh, uh, models. We've got a, a Nissan Leaf and a BMW um, i3s. The BMW has a range extender. In other words, um, you can drive for a much longer, uh, you know, uh, period than the Nissan Leaf, and so. People prefer to drive the BMW, you know, for, for you know, because somehow they feel that they will not run out of battery power because of that, uh, you know, range extender. So that there have been a preference, you know, uh, between the two vehicles. 
um, you know, some people are just scared of, of getting into into these vehicles. They think, you know, the vehicle somewhere along the way will just stop. You, you know, the battery will just, you know, um, die. You know, it will just get discharged like that. But that's not how the, the, the vehicles are built. You know, the vehicles are built with... Uh, with with uh, an information system that gives you uh, the state of charge of the battery at the beginning of your your trip, how long you can travel, and you can plan your trip. So I mean, we're seeing you know um, more and more people now planning their trips rather than just jump into the car and and drive off. They now say, okay, I'm going to uh, a place uh, which is 50 kilometers from here. Um, how is the battery charge, the state of charge, you know, will it give me that? Yes, if not, maybe I'll make the trip tomorrow and leave the, the you know, the vehicle on charge. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more planned trips happening, you know, uh, than would be normal if they were driving uh, an ordinary car. <sighs> Look, like I said, it is um, it is a new technology, um, and uh, the uptake I would say has been uh, quite uh, you know um, low. Uh, I don't know about the the numbers. Uh, maybe uh, Nissan uh, and, and BMW can can provide the the numbers, uh, but we don't see a whole lot of electric vehicles on on the road. So uh, you know that shows that uh, somehow. Uh, people do not know that these vehicles are available on our, on, on our market uh, and uh, honestly speaking I haven't seen any advert uh, for these vehicles from, from the, the, the vehicle dealers. Uh, they're supposed to communicate uh, that these vehicles are available on the market, uh, that you know, they must communicate the benefits of, of driving an electric car. I know that one of the, the challenges is, is that uh, the vehicles are expensive when you compare them to, you know, to uh, similar vehicles uh, you know, that are not electric, the normal vehicles, uh, they are expensive. Uh, but you, know, you have very low operating costs. You know, um, the cost of charging uh, these vehicles is, is very low and you can get a lot of benefit. Uh, there are no CO2 emissions. So, you know, you have a lot of environmental uh, benefits. Uh, the other thing is obviously, uh, like I said, there is, for those that know, there is the uh, range anxiety that if I have to drive an electric vehicle to Durban, I will not, you know, find the charging infrastructure. So, you know, so I'm talking about the range, how far you can go in a full charge before you stop and charge it. But also the availability or non-availability of this charging infrastructure on, 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 our, on our roads. Uh, the other thing is uh, there have to be some sort of uh, incentives from government if, if we're going to encourage uh, you know, uh, these vehicles. Uh, in all the markets in the world uh, where the population of electric vehicles uh, is increasing, you always have some, some sort of government incentives, some sort of subsidies, uh, so that people can acquire this technology and, and, and then get the benefit. So, you know, to say is South African ready probably is not ready from the infrastructure point of view. Uh, there are a few charging stations that are popping up in shopping malls and a few uh, uh, office parks. Uh, other than that, you know, we haven't seen any, any charging infrastructure on the highways. Uh, you know, this is something that obviously needs to be taken up. So, like I said, we've got two vehicles. So, you know, so Nissan Leaf uh, and the BMW i3s. Um, you know, with both cars, I think you can get a maximum speed of about 150, 160 kilometer per hour. Um, the range, the Nissan Leaf, you can drive on a full charge. You can drive, uh, you know, up to 150 kilometers. Um, uh, the BMW, you can uh, on a full charge, you can drive 150 kilometers, but you can also get another 150 kilometers from, uh, you know, using the range extender. Uh, the range extender basically simply 
um, ensures that the, the battery uh, you know, charge is maintained. Um, you know, this is a, a small, uh, let's say, a small charger. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a small generator that uses petrol. Uh, that ensures that the vehicle, um, the, the battery remains, uh, uh, you know, at the state of charge uh, constantly, and uh, and so it, you can you can use that to increase your range. That's why it's called a range extender. So it gives you another 150 kilometers. So in total, you can drive uh, on a full battery charge and the range extender up to like 300 300 kilometers. But there are vehicles uh, coming up. You know, uh, on onto the market. Uh, you know, you might have heard of of, of Tesla. Uh, you know, there's a Tesla A's, Tesla threes. Uh, these vehicles have got. Um, you know, um, the range is, is much much uh, higher than uh, what we're getting from the vehicles we have. You can drive. I think with uh, Tesla three, you can get uh, up to about three hundred or, or so, three hundred, four hundred kilometers. Um, and uh, but these vehicles are not on our market. They are not, uh, you know, they are not in South Africa yet. Uh, but uh, those are the improvements that are being made. You know, the, the battery, the technology is improving, and the range of these vehicles uh, is improving. And and so um, you would find that uh, with time, um, these vehicles can travel or can drive. Uh, almost the same range as, 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 as your internal combustion engine vehicle uh, on a full charge. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if we look at uh, our BRICS, uh, you, know, uh, you know, partners, uh, which we normally want to compare ourselves to, if you look at India and, uh, and China, they are, they are far much, uh, you know, ahead of us, you know. There are some local manufacturing of, of, of these vehicles in, in China, uh, and uh, I think it's leading the world uh, in, in, in this aspect. So we, you know, we, we do need a deliberate policy to try and uh, you know drive the uptake of these vehicles. Right. You know, I think it's always. Uh, you know, people always, you know, like, you know, your last question, you know, whether, uh, how are we faring, you know, compared to our, you know, maybe BRICS partners. I mean, uh, as you may know, you know, there was a, a, an electric vehicle project in South Africa, you know, uh, in, um, which um, by the time that the, 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 the company was uh, uh, being liquidated, uh, this company was called... Um, Optimal Energy, and they produced uh, Joel, which which was an electric car prototypes. I think they had uh, produced about four prototypes, and these vehicles were you know were good, but uh, it was a startup company, and it had its main objective of um, developing and, and and making sure that South Africa uh, you know has an electric vehicle developed locally. Uh, but I think the costs, uh, you know, became too much. Uh, I think there was a uh, lack of funding. Uh, obviously, uh, they needed to commercialize uh, the product and, and, and get onto the market. Um, I think they couldn't uh, uh, sustain the operations. You know, the, the, the funds ran out and, and they, they couldn't uh, uh, get more funding. Uh, and so, the technology was developed locally, the battery you know, technology was developed locally. I mean, there was a lot of knowledge that was generated through that project. And so, you know, I'm not saying, you know, it needs to be resuscitated, but somehow, you know, one feels that uh, uh, there is need, you know, somehow to uh, get involved in, in the whole electric vehicle technology, you know, uh, based on uh, what um, advantage we can offer, you know, uh, be it in battery technology or battery management systems or, or whatever that they developed. Uh, you know, we don't have to develop the whole car, uh, you know, from, from, from scratch like they wanted. But somehow, you know, you feel that there is some, some knowledge that, that was generated and should be put to use. And then...